how can we help folks brand building? And so I think for early career developers, this is major. I'm Mike Roberts. Uh, I'm super excited to be here with you today. My background is in software development and help tons of developers like you land their first jobs in tech. And so super excited to be here with you. It's really about how you put yourself out there, how you rise above the competition and how you elevate yourself to secure that first offer. And so some of you may be earlier on in, in your journey, and this may be like a little premature, you're thinking in your mind, but the reality is it's never too soon to start working on the collateral that you need to be able to tell your story. And one of the most powerful tools for personal branding I'm going to cover is doing stuff like this, right? Putting yourself out there. When it comes to branding, I want to try a little exercise with you. And so feel free to throw some comments in the chat. And I want to get your take on a few brands I'm going to throw out there. Again, this is just to get you warmed up and thinking about this from the perspective of something that we all, I think, naturally do, which is attribute certain characteristics to brands. And so, again, this is important because this is an activity that you need to start like leveling up your game and start putting together the pieces yourself. So imagine if you would, what comes to mind when you think about brand? Let's say if I say Apple, what are a few words, a few ideas, things that come to mind, good or bad, when you hear about or when you hear Apple? Next, what about Nike? And again, just a couple words, first thoughts, things that come to mind when you think of uh, Nike. And then let's just do one more. Cult. What do you sense? What's your, what's the tip of your tongue when you think about Coca-Cola? Amazing. So I, I'm seeing high tech. I'm seeing innovative fashion. Phenomenal. Intelligence, sports, fizz, right? These are all, these are all great. And so it's important to think just mentioning the name of these brands are so iconic that it conjures in your mind certain positive or negative attitudes. And so we want to apply that same thing to how you think about putting yourself out there in the world. And that, in essence, is personal branding. So why is this so crucial? Because it's essentially how you create that perception of the people that you want to present to the world and it's your online presence it's the projects that you showcase how you communicate your value right and in today's super competitive market that's really focused on people with lots of experience and way more early career people vying for a small set of roles that are available having that strong personal brand can be the differentiator between getting noticed or completely being overlooked and it's about showing that potential to employers, not just what you know, because that's an important factor, but what are your passions? What, what drives you? What motivates you? What's your unique story that they can get behind and a reason why they'll champion for you? And when this is done right, personal branding is what helps you stand out and makes you memorable as all the resumes and portfolios are going by their desk. People are asking, what can I do to get the interview? What can I do to you know, improve, improve the chances that I'm going to get? get that call. And it really is just making sure that you're yourself out there, even though it's not the most comfortable for a lot of us as software engineers. One of the most powerful tools I think for personal branding is what you're seeing right now, video storytelling and the video communication mechanism that I would suggest is vlogging. So not blogging with a B, but vlogging with a V video blogging. And it's a game changer because it allows you to share your journey and be very authentic in an engaging way. And I think platforms like YouTube and LinkedIn is perfect for this. And it can be short. These can be YouTube shorts, LinkedIn video. When you're blogging, you're not just telling people about your current skills. You're showing them. You're showing them your passion. You're showing them that your perseverance, that you're like ahead of the rest of the folks that are just doing the pedestrian stuff. And you're putting yourself out there. And so to me, it's a fantastic opportunity that you really should not sleep on. So I'm sure the question you're asking is, what should I vlog about? What is the thing that I should be doing to script it out and, and be ready to go? 
because just merely creating content for the sake of content, it's not going to work, right? You can't be all over the place. You need to be pretty focused on telling your personal story. And so that learning journey is usually where I have people start, right? So let's say you're just graduating from a coding bootcamp or you're currently in one or you're in the, the next gen hybrid program. And so you're still going through. What you want to be doing is sharing your experience, the challenges you're facing in real time. And, and how do you overcome or how have you overcome them? You want to be authentic, vulnerable, and really trying to let your personality shine through, right? And so trying to create that engaging content that's really your personal journey, talk about what excites you in tech, share tips, things that you're learning along the way, and really remember to document this process because you're going to want to look back when you start getting to the job search portion, and you're going to want to be able to show that transformation that's happened over the last 10 weeks, 16 weeks, whatever the length of you know, programs or training that you're in. And then remember, consistency is crucial. So you want to set a schedule like once a week and whether it's weekly updates or bi-weekly updates, tutorials, demoing apps that you've made, you want to get into the habit of regularly building this vault of content. What does it take for you to start? Because I feel like that's the barrier that a lot of folks like self-impose on themselves. And the reality is all you really need to get started is an iPhone or an Android. Most cell phones today have cameras that are going to be phenomenal, like way more than what's needed for you to get a great video up on YouTube or a great video into LinkedIn. And so later on, if you want to invest in a better microphone for clearer audio, I use some DJI products, a little lavalier mics, or I'm using a Yeti nano mic right now. These products are great and they're not super expensive, but again, you don't even have to start with that. I would suggest that you just start with your camera, just start selfie, selfie stick. And then from there, once you start to feel like, okay, you want to step your game up, you want to get a little bit deeper. Awesome. Then you can invest a couple hundred bucks in getting the right gear. Let me know in the comments, if you want to run down of again, my setup, and I can certainly put together like a little flyer or handout on exactly what I use. Everything from editing, I'm loving a tool right now. It's called Descript. Amazing for editing really quickly. I know a lot of other people use CapCut. That's another great piece of software. So honestly, when you're first getting started, you can even just use YouTube Studio, right? You record it, you upload it, you edit the video simply there. You want to make the process as simple as possible when you're getting started so that it's not an additional excuse for you to just like procrastinate and not get anything done. So... I'm checking uh, the comments here. Just Janata, loving this. Gems, because again, that documentation of journey, huge. Dan, superstar, great seeing you in here. Shout out to Alex for making this all uh, come together. This is his brainchild, getting this restarted. We did this for, for some years. And it's good to reboot this and have some new focus on what folks need right now to make the moves in a more challenging economy than what we might be in been dealing with in the past. So awesome. So I'm hearing yes on the equipment list. So I'll definitely put together a little handout on that and make that available to folks. So keep dropping your comments, questions, concerns in the chat. And uh, from time to time, I'll take a look, see if I can answer as many as I can. And then yeah, keep it moving. Again, when you're getting started, there's no need for you to focus on a lot of paid tools or services, just your phone and YouTube. That's enough. Most important thing is you actually doing it consistently. So you're going to want to create, you know, a YouTube channel, optimize your videos for visibility, and then, you know, do all the little secret sauce stuff, like use compelling titles and description and tags, jump on Canva and get some of those thumbnails. You want to engage with your comments, ask people to comment on your video when they comment on your video. Again, use that as an opportunity to engage with folks, engage with folks. Storytelling is the next natural piece that you want to include in your arsenal. And so when we talk about storytelling, what you want to use is setting where you are in your journey. Don't be bashful. Talk about what sparked your interest in tech. Describe challenges you're facing, how you adjust your mindset or your approach to overcome them. And then you want to share your wins. And so that's the arc of a story, starting with the situation that you're in and then what challenges, what's the struggles, what are you working through? Then in with some wins, lessons learned, and it's going to really show potential employers 
because that's who this is the target audience for. Let me back up for a second. Now, when you're doing all this, sure, you're doing it to document your journey. And when I started having students do this like five, six years ago, it was really so that they would have a better time reflecting on where they were when they started and where they were at any point in time, because the incremental changes that were happening were sometimes really hard for folks to see. So I started an experiment five, six years ago where we're having folks record themselves first week, second week, third week as they were going through a coding boot camp, so that when they got to week seven, eight, and they were like, uh, I don't know if this is working. I don't feel like I'm making progress. I'm like, go back and watch your videos from like week one. You were terrible. And I think it gives them a better chance of seeing that perspective between like where they started and where they are just a few weeks later. So you're going to do it for yourself, number one. But the secondary audience, the one you're putting this out there for is to build that network and establish your personal brand so that people will look to you as not just a wallflower software developer, but someone that can come in and is going to grab the bulls by the horn and is going to really navigate through challenges and rise up. You take that to heart. You want to be able to share your journey and make it something that you can bring someone along with you because it's that, it's that much easier for them to want to be an internal champion for you, to want to back you and be like, oh man, this person, I, I saw a couple of their videos. They're probably going to watch all your videos, right? But if you have a hiring manager, you throw the link to your YouTube channel on there, they can see one or two links. They're going to go through everything or check out a few links. And that's going to be enough to really spark some interest, right? So turn your camera on, document your journey. That way, when you go to your job search, when you get to the point where you're ready to start putting it out, now you've got a mini docu-series that you can use to hook potential hiring managers. And that's going to be how you can stand out for the rest. Listen. 90% of the people are going to hear this and take zero action. You want to be in that 10%, right? Look, we looked at signups earlier this week and we had, I don't know, 125 people that signed up. But the reality is whenever there's these kinds of events, roughly half the people that sign up for the event show up to the event. So if you think of this like a funnel and what you're trying to do is you're trying to get ahead. There's that joke about the two campers in the woods and they see a bear off in the distance. And one camper says to the other, run. And the other camper starts tying his shoelaces and putting his running shoes on. And the first camper says to the same one, like, hey, why are you messing with your shoes? You need to outrun that bear. He says, I don't need to outrun the bear. I just need to outrun you. And that's how you should think about personal branding elevating you. You want to be to the point where you don't have to compete against everyone. You're really only competing against the top 10. You want to be in that top 10. And as long as you're taking these actions, you're putting yourself, you're establishing yourself as a premium brand and you're in that space. You don't want to be in the space of just not taking action. A bunch of people will sign up, not show up. Over the people that show up, only some percentage of them are going to take action. You need to be in that group. You need to consider that the personal brand, the way you sell yourself is going to be that extra bit that's going to get you across the finish line. It's not going to be the end all be all in terms of you can't walk in and expect to have no skill and be able to just like land a role. You're going to have the skill and you're going to have to do a good job of selling the fact that you're the right person for that particular job. And it should be like, man, I saw this person doing these YouTube videos. I want to talk to them. So by, by vlogging, you're not just building a brand, you're creating this narrative that again, demonstrates, physically demonstrates your passion. It's the most powerful way to connect with the audience, build your network, and then make that lasting positive impression. I want to look at some of the key elements of personal branding that every developer should focus on. So first and foremost is going to be your online presence. Because let's face it, we, we don't use snail mail. We're not sending, you know, we're in front of people. And so your LinkedIn profile, your GitHub profile, those are going to be the way you've got a passion projects. You've got a portfolio website. Those are going to be the ways that employers are going to be able to get into contact. with you. So when we establish our, our brand, we need to have that like premium, all the places where they could go, the, there needs to be a cohesive, high quality or the best quality content that you can make and stuff that's up to date and showcases your best work. And so you want to make sure it's polished, which means if you were doing a bunch of toy projects that aren't quite ready for prime time, you're going to want to clean those up, put those in the closet. 
and instead highlight and showcase some of your best work. So part, portfolio passion project. I cover a lot of this in my ebook. So the link is in the little ticker at the bottom. Get that. It's free. Absolute great resource. It's tons of experiments and the things we've seen work with previous students over the past seven to 10 years. And I would say from my last few years as a hiring manager, when I was software engineer and had to be part of the hiring process through six, seven years of code schools and coding boot camps, everything that I saw that I thought this is what works is in the book. So go out and grab it in there. We talk about all these. And so I'll just at a high level, go through, you want to make sure that you have your portfolio in GitHub that highlights the projects that you're most proud of. And then for each project. You want to make sure that you've got brief description. You want to make sure you talk about your role. Hopefully most of these projects will be solo so that you can basically take all of the spotlight. What technologies you use and then what's the outcome? Is there a live website that you can go to? How can someone put hands on your work product? If you are doing that, so you're vlogging, you got your portfolio and then clear and consistent communication. Those are going to be like the top three pillars for your brand. When we talk about communication and branding, I'm also talking about like tone and voice, right? You don't want to be meek. You want to exude confidence. And so you want to even just, if you're not feeling it, you need to fake it and you need to fake like you're playing a character and this character is brave and confident and they want to get after it. I'm not saying you're like an expert braggadociously. I'm just saying I am super proud of this astroweight calculator that I just Brit built. Let me walk you through what this does. And it's fancy because I did X, Y, and Z, but you want to say it with some confidence. So whether it's a, a video blog or a blog post or LinkedIn update, your communication should reflect that professional persona, be clear, be positive, but remember you want to present yourself as a, I'm a problem solver. I'm going to get, I'm going to get after it. I'm gritty because that's what people are hiring for when they're looking for early career folks. They're not expecting you to have a bunch of knowledge. What they are expecting you is be scrappy and be willing to work a little bit harder and be a little bit more loyal. So those are the kinds of things that you want to bring across in your professional communication. So I saw a question, Corey Hill asks, is it wise to put videos on your LinkedIn or would it be better to put it on your personal website? I would say both. I'd say video on LinkedIn is new. In fact, I don't even know if everybody has video on LinkedIn. I know I do, but I'm in like the creators thing. And so I get access to some features that other people don't have. So throw a comment in there. If you've got access to video, put a comment in the chat just so we can know that it's available. But since video is new to LinkedIn and they want to make it a success, they're trying to compete with YouTube shorts and Instagram. It's definitely an area where I would upload it directly to LinkedIn. And then you can also put a link on your website and whether or not on your website, you want to just display the YouTube or you want to display the LinkedIn video, like six, one, half a dozen or another, but I would definitely encourage you when you're uploading videos to upload them directly to each of the platforms, because they all want to promote people putting content on their platform and try to keep people on their platform. So that would be my suggestion would be uploaded uh, natively to each of the different platforms. Nice. I love the fact that you've got, you got two videos already. Now it's just about continuing to build that cash. Awesome. So, um, moving forward, professional communication, super detail oriented, pay attention to those details. Those are going to be uh, super, super important. All right. We've got a little bit of time left. So I want to open it up to the floor, give folks some time to ask some questions, throw them in the chat. I'll take as many questions as I possibly can for the next five, 10 minutes. And then love to hear uh, from any of you, if you've already started the ebook, what your thoughts are. Um, I'm also thinking about re the opening up a community. And so if anybody's thinking about what are some ways that they would like to get super involved and engaged, if I'm gonna open up a community, I wanna make sure people are super dedicated, super passionate and are going to be really active job seekers and not passive job seekers. So if, if that is something that's like interesting to you, then please 
shoot, shoot me a message. Oh. Alex just gave me a brilliant suggestion and uh hybrid community. You guys will be earning, I think some badges and some micro certs this week. If you're in a program and you're hitting these milestones, man, celebrate those, throw those on LinkedIn, cheer each other along and support one another because those are the kinds of like engagements that are going to spread and give somebody in the community that's in a position to recommend you or be an internal champion or being tire manager to like then find you and then find your YouTube channel and pretty much everywhere they go. If everything just looks like you are the most super motivated go getter, this is something you want. You're super passionate about it. That's what they want to see as a hiring manager. I can tell you countless times. When someone would send a resume across my desk, the first thing I would do is start clicking on some of the links. And if I went there and it was like a partially done profile or the person just didn't seem to want it, I was not enthusiastic about calling that person back. And if I did, I would give them a little bit tougher of a uh, interview in terms of questions and trying to figure out, because I don't know who they are. I need to get a sense of who they are. I need to get a sense of that. If you do it all up front in your brand, you create this perception that, oh, I already know this person. I've already watched X number of videos that this person has. So it's really easy for you to make the process way easier in, in the future. So not a, a, exactly make sure that you throw that thing up there and then follow up with like how you did it, how you accomplish it. Easy content for you to just bang out there really quickly. Okay. If there are any more questions that come through in the next minute or two, I will take those. And then otherwise we are about to wrap. We are like right on. Yeah. We are right on the 30, 25, 30 minutes mark. So I'll hang for a couple more minutes and then cut y'all loose. What other questions do you guys have? Patrick, love the feedback. Got to get you beyond the first chapter. That's where something like 80% of readers drop off after chapter one. Got to get to the end. It's packed full of just all of the things I've seen successful people do to land jobs. That's all it is. It's free. Those of you that are like, I'm not hyping something to like put money in my own pocket. It's a hundred percent free. It's a wealth of knowledge that you'll use during the job search process. What a oh, man. I think for me, I have a very unique journey into tech that's not the same as most other people so for me personally i started coding when i was a teenager and, and i'm in my 40s now so that said i had a long time to just like self-teach and learn to code on my own and so i didn't it wasn't like a bang these are a bunch of things that i learned i guess the one thing that i should have done much earlier is I should have had more confidence that I could get out and actually use some of my self-taught knowledge. And I didn't feel like I had that confidence until after I had already been freelancing and finally finished my degree. It took me like a decade to finish my computer science degree. I could have been earning a lot more money way earlier on had I just like felt confident about it and felt like I could put myself out there. So. For me, my journey is very different than other people. The, the thing that I hear other people say about wish they would have known this before is they think that it's going to be much, much harder for them to learn what they need to learn to get an entry level job. I think a lot of people assume their knowledge has to be way higher than what it really needs to be. You need to have the fundamentals, the blocking and tackling. But then once you have that, once you have the blocking and tackling under your belt, the other piece that employers want to see is your potential because they're not hiring you for the skills you have today. They're hiring you for the skills you're going to have after you've been on the job for one or two years, because no matter what, it's going to take time to ramp up. The question is how quickly do you ramp? What I like to call learning agility. What is your level that I can predict you'll be at if I give, if I, as a mentor pour into you for a year. Where will you be? And so that's why you're trying to convince people that you're a safe place for them to invest time and for them to invest like effort and energy. If, if you invest in David, you're going to get two X ROI. He's going to be your next 
senior engineer, director of engineering, CTO, right? If they can envision that and they can see, man, it's super clear to me. If I pour into you, if I hire you and give you support, they'll do it. They'll 1000%. So hopefully that helps. Audiobook. I, I, I hear you. So I'm going to work on it. I'm going to work on the audiobook version of it. So that is in the works.